Hey everyone, David here, SF Angler, and the other day I went down to Pier 1 on the Embarcadero of San Francisco right in the bay to do some live bait fishing with anchovies and see what I could catch. And the first thing I did right when I got there was throw out a dead anchovy that I saved from the last time I went, that way I could get bait in the water as soon as I got there, and just a little short cast so that my bait doesn't fly off the hook. And I'm letting it sink all the way to the bottom, because that's where the fish are. And these bungee cords you see me using are really, really cheap, and they are essential for this kind of fishing, and you will see later why they are so important. And I just set my drag nice and loose, put the clicker on, and we're in business. Right here, I'm filling up my bait bucket. You can make your own, or these are really cheap, only $5 online. And this is important, that way when the anchovies come through, you can load up on all your bait for the day, and keep it alive to use for the rest of your fishing trip. And the next order of business is getting some live bait. So here I'm taking out a sabiki rig and I like to snip them in half after I buy them. That way I get two rigs for the price of one and I comply with the San Francisco Bay three hook limit. And I checked a few spots that I know the bait tends to hold during low tide. And it took a little while to find a school, but eventually I found them. And I have two videos in depth on catching anchovies that I'll link up in the corner if you want to learn how to do this. So once I found the bait, I loaded up for all the bait I needed for the rest of the day. Here actually one of the anchovies flopped right into the bucket and I actually spent a while looking on the ground trying to find it, only to realize it was in my bucket already. And it's essential with these northern anchovies especially to keep giving your bait fresh water so they survive while you're catching bait and your bucket isn't hanging in the water. Then I replaced my dead anchovy with a nice lively one and casted it out. And soon after that, I was trying to catch a little bit more bait and I hear my clicker absolutely screaming. I run over to my rod and this is where the bungee cord is so important when you hook a big bat ray like this and it takes its initial run. If you don't have that bungee cord, your rod's going to be way out in the middle of the bay. And it took me six minutes to get this fish in. Um, there's a reason they call these mud marlins. They're extremely powerful. By far the hardest fight of any fish we have locally. And I'm extremely grateful that this other guy fishing had a landing net because I was not prepared and this fish was way too big to flip up onto the pier. And that circle hook did its job. The ray was right in the corner of the mouth and the hook came out real easy. That bat ray gave me a really great fight, so I picked him up and sent him back where he belongs. Then I put on a fresh new live anchovy and casted it out. And when the current is strong, I check my line pretty frequently to make sure there's not any seaweed fouling up my rig. And just like that, we got another fish on, and this one at, the, at first I really thought it was a halibut, but then it took a big run under the pier and I knew it was another bat ray. And this other man fishing really came in clutch again with the net job. And I like to flip the bat rays over onto their back to unhook them. That way I get as far away from that stinger as possible and they calm down a little bit. And I see a lot of anglers really struggle to handle bat rays, but it's real simple. Just get four fingers in the mouth and your thumb on top of the head. It's secure, it works with all sizes of rays, and it's the safest way to hold them for both you and the ray. And just like that, we sent him right back where he belongs. I hope you enjoyed this video because I definitely had a lot of fun fishing as I always do and I got a lot more videos coming soon so stay tuned.